you. Let's lift our voices, our hearts, our hands to heaven right now. God, we love you. God, we're here for you. God, God our purpose tonight is to worship you, magnify you, to lift you up, Jesus, God. Lord, we know that praise is fitting, God. Come on, for every situation, for every season in life, for every night of the week, God, on a Friday night, God, we're here to praise you. God, we're here to lift you up, God. We're here to sing a new song of praise and worship. In Jesus' name, I wonder if you could put your hands together right now as you lift your voices. God, we worship you, Jesus. We've come expecting great things tonight. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to sing a new song. Hallelujah. Here I am, God, to lift you up.
Should praise be a declaration of what he's already done? Come on and let it be anticipation for what he's yet to do. I praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord, for victory. Thank you, Lord, that I'm not just a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. Thank you, Jesus. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ who gives us victory. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Come on. The Bible says, for it is good, it is pleasant, it's fitting. Come on, for the redeemed to lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, and we're in his house tonight, victorious, standing victorious. God, we're here for you. God, we're here for you. We exalt your name, Jesus. One more time. Can you put your hands together? Come on, in declaration for what he did, for what he's going to do, for what he's doing right now. My faith, I believe. Come on, I lift him up. My faith. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
some of you came with great expectations of God this evening because I looked around we don't have a whole lot of guests so there's needs here that's going to be met because there is a power of the Holy Ghost that's in this place I saw one of the dear ladies walking while we was practicing and she went to pray I don't, I don't know that she was praying she went to lay a hand on something it looked like just the love of God being transmitted I'll tell her who she is afterwards she probably already knows there was just such a beautiful presence of God throughout this worship service throughout the beginning of it God is wanting to do something, and there's more of him than you're able to absorb. So whatever you think your need is that's too big for God, it's just going to be washed away. Ask God to forgive, to cleanse, and let the anointing of the Holy Ghost minister through this worship service. We're going to have church tonight. Amen. If the ushers will come receive the tithe and offering, you can make your way back to your seats. We're going to ask God to move in this place, continue to do what he wants. Let your faith grow. Will you do that? Let God do what he's wanting to do. And tomorrow night we'll come back bringing friends, testifying. You're not going to believe what God did in my life tonight. Amen. Ushers, come. Lord bless you. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness to us. Thank you for this opportunity to be in your sweet presence. I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost that is here and able to do everything that is necessary. I thank you for that spirit of expectation that's been rising in every spirit. Let great faith rise up. Let us get a hold of it and your work be accomplished. Ask your blessings upon the tithe and the offering. Everything that's done here, we give it back to you with praise. In Jesus' name, amen.
power of praying. They're praising Los Angeles Giant or Dodgers. Boston Red Sox. It's not going to help them win one iota. Because that's just earth praising earth. We were created to praise Him. And when you get the equation right, there's a power in praise. He inhabits the praises of His people. Send up Judah or send up praise. God begins to discomfort, the scripture says, the enemy. Power of praise. No, we're not crazy. We just know how to use praise and worship. Hallelujah. How many of you need God to do something in your life tonight? Amen. Would you just take that other hand? Would you just lift that problem or that issue or that situation to God? And lift up the banner of the name of the Lord over that issue. God, I praise you. God, here's the situation. Here's the battle I'm facing. But God, you're worthy and I'm just going to worship you. I'm going to magnify you over this situation. I'm going I'm to trust you to take care of this today. God, I put this in your hands and from this point on in this service I'm going to focus upon you. I'm going to focus upon your word because your word is a lamp unto my feet. It's a light into my path. It's hope for my heart. It's direction for my life. And I know, God, you're going to speak a word into this situation. I know, God, that you're going to speak a word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God, I want my ears to be receptive to receive the word of God. I'm going to take heed how I hear your word tonight because I want it to find good ground in my life and bring forth fruit. Hallelujah. 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 Can we just give God a hand clap of praise in the house? He's worthy. I'm here. God's here. We might as well have church. Amen. Brother Shannon, you ready to have church? If you can have church back there in the corner, certainly we can have it up here. We'll just surround this place in, expect, in expectation. How about that? We're going to believe God tonight for God to work. Amen. Wouldn't it be awesome to walk out of this place on a Friday night? Miracle signs and wonders happening. Faith high. Expectation high. Let's kick this thing off right, trusting God. God, I know you're able. I know you're willing. God, we're going to receive it. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. It's Friday night. There's people out there partying, having a good time. When I was, when I was in the trades, yo, TGI, TGIF, thank God it's Friday. We even had signs around the shop. So you, if you think this place is a cemetery, you ought to come around here at 4 o'clock on Friday. Resurrection happens. Come on, they're, they're getting wait for Friday night to get here. How about you? I tell you, I've anticipated this evening for a long time. I can't wait to see what God's going to do tonight. I said, I can't wait to see what God's going to do tonight. You're in the presence of God Almighty. You're in the presence of the living God. It doesn't matter what you have need of. My God should supply all your need. I want to say all. You shouldn't leave here with a need present. If the need's not fulfilled, you ought to walk out of here with a complete assurance. It's, it's taken care of. God's got this. Amen. Praise God. I have looked forward to meeting Brother Winters. I didn't know who this guy was. All I know was Brother Greg Randall said, you need to have him. 
And if Poppy Randall says have him, we're going to have him. Amen. And uh, I met him last night for the first time in my entire I don't even know if this joker can preach. I promise you he can't because I felt the fire in his spirit just fellowshipping with him over the last, the last couple of meals. I already love this guy. You're going to love him too. I, look, I know the first night it's kind of like, okay, we're getting to know each other. Brother Winters, would you just raise your hand? That's him. You know him. We're going to have a good time tonight. He, sir, he has the same father you have. He's just a brother you haven't met yet. And he walks in the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I felt it in his spirit. We're fixing to turn him loose, uh, him and God. And I I'm excited about what's going to happen in this place tonight. How many of you need a refilling in the Holy Ghost? You can have it before you leave. How many of you need a healing in your body? You can have it before you leave. How many of you need an answer? You can have it before you leave this place tonight. Amen. The other good thing he's got going for him is he hails from the same hometown as our bishop, Greenville, Mississippi. So with those two things behind him, he's got to be an awesome guy. I said he's got to be a great guy. Would you put your hands together and welcome the man of God to the pulpit? Brother Mark Winters, would you come take your liberty? God bless you. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise around now, shall we? Hallelujah. God, we honor you. Bless and praise your body in Martless name. You're worthy to be exalted and praised, oh God. You are great and greatly to be praised. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. I love what I feel in this house tonight. Amen. When I walked in this building, I felt the presence of the Lord. And God is going to do some awesome, incredible things. Because that's who he is and that's what he does. Amen. It's such an honor to be here, and it's an honor to uh, meet your pastor. Of course, your bishop. I met him when I was uh, just a little boy. Amen. And uh, always love and respected the Lashley family, their entire family. And it's such an honor. I feel very honored and humbled to be here tonight. Give honor to your bishop and his wife and pastor and his family. Had a great time of fellowship last night and the today. And uh, God, God is just, I've been so excited about this weekend about what the Lord is going to do. And uh, I believe that, that God's going to do some miracles in this house. I believe that. I believe people are going to receive the Holy Ghost. Things are going to happen in the Spirit. Hallelujah. I already feel faith in this building. Amen. The very You may say, well, I don't know if I have any faith. The very fact that you showed up for church tells me you have faith. Because if you didn't think God could help you, and you didn't think you could have a miracle in your life, amen, you wouldn't be here tonight. Amen. But you had enough faith to bring you to the house of God. Don't let it stop you at your seat. Amen. Just respond. But some time ago, I was praying, and, and uh, I, I was guilty of praying this prayer. God, uh, I want you to move in the service tonight. Anybody ever prayed that prayer? I was praying, God, I want you to move in this service tonight and move. And, and the Lord just stopped me right in the middle of my prayer. And God just asked me the question. He said, move? I moved upon the face of the waters. Men wrote as they were moved on by the Holy Ghost. I moved into an upper room. He said, I've never quit moving. You just need to find where I am and move with me. And if you'll move with me, I'll confirm my word. Amen. And I feel that. I feel such a liberty in the Holy Ghost here tonight. God is going to do awesome and incredible things here tonight. Amen. So if you have your Bible, I'm going to go to the word of the Lord, the book of John chapter 5. Now, I did fail to ask uh, Pastor how, uh, what time you normally get, get out, but I promise you uh, I'm going to be as brief as possible regardless of how long that takes me tonight. Amen. John chapter 5. Don't leave now. Amen. <laughs> Amen. John chapter number 5 and verse number 5 declares, it tells a story, and a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. Someone say 38 years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time. Someone say a long time. He had been now a long time in that case. He saith unto him, Will thou be made 
whole. Verse 5, we are informed he has a 38-year-old infirmity or sickness. Verse 6, the Lord is aware that he's been in this case or in this condition for a very long time. Amen. I want to preach tonight with the help of the Holy Ghost for just a few moments about a long-time case and an on-time God. Amen. A long time case and an on time God. Would you lift your hands and your voice with me right now and let's ask the Holy Ghost to minister in this house. God, I thank you for your presence and your power and your anointing that's in this building. I thank you for what you are doing. God, the liberty of your spirit in this house. I thank you for what you're going to do in the next few moments. God, we're not asking you to do something you're incapable of doing. We're simply asking that you would duplicate the book of Acts in our midst. That while the word is being preached, that the Holy Ghost would fall. That you would send your word and that you would heal. I pray, oh God, that your spirit, God, would flow freely. Let us follow the leading and direction of the Holy Ghost. Let your name be exalted, your kingdom advanced, and your people blessed. Your spirit fall in this house tonight. I pray in Jesus' name, in in Jesus' name, if the Lord has been good to you, why don't you lift your voice and clap your hands to it and give him some praise in the house right now. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. In this setting of scripture, it is the time of the feast of the Jews. And Jesus, like many other Jews, has come to Jerusalem. But I find it interesting that he does not make his first stop the synagogue nor the palace. But he goes to uh, the hurting and the hopeless, which was an indication of his design and purpose on coming to our world. The Bible said he came to seek and to save the lost, to bind up the wounded, the broken hearted, amen, to heal them. So he goes to a pool call, Bethesda, that is located by the sheep market where sheep are kept and sold, but he's not there to take inventory of the sheep, but he's, he's there to minister to a group of a host of helpless humanity. The Bible indicates that residing within the shadow of the five porches are three distinct groups of people. There are the blind, the halt, or the lame, and the third group are the withered, those that had uh, particular members of their body that are non-functioning or paralyzed. They are mentioned because they are the least able to help themselves into the water. Thus, they would lie the longest waiting in the porches. And the Bible said they waited for the moving uh, of the water. They would lie and wait for that moment uh, that the waters would be stirred because the scripture tells us that an angel went down in a certain season and would begin to trouble the water and who Whoever was the first in the pool was made whole of whatever disease or affliction uh, that they had. Uh, understand it was the angel stirring the water, but it was left up to the diseased individual to get themselves uh, into the moving of the water. It reminds me so much of how God operates. Uh, God will furnish the, the miracle. He will back up the promise. But you and I must furnish the faith and the action. I discovered a long time ago God's not going to do everything for me but if I will do what I can when I've reached my extremity and done everything I know to do it's then that the power of God steps in and begins to do what I cannot do. Uh, simply put if you will, God will. We're not waiting on God tonight. God's waiting on us. Uh, he's waiting on us to take a step in response uh, to his word and his promise uh, that he has already given uh, and one of the people by the pool was a man that had a serious medical condition. His infirmity left him incapable of using his limbs and Jesus found him by the pool waiting on the waters to be troubled waiting to get in to be healed. Now the Bible does not say how long the man had been lying by the pool but it does state that when Jesus saw him he knew he had been a long time in that case or in that condition and Jesus simply asked Ask him, will thou or do you want to be made whole? 
seems like an unassuming elementary question to ask someone who's been sick for 38 years, would you like to be healed? Why ask such a question? Simply because God will not override your will. He will not do something that you really don't want him to do. Oh, Jesus, help me not get in trouble here tonight. Because believe it or not, I've known people in my life who actually prefer to stay in their present situation that is known and comfortable and familiar that rather than risk what is involved in being delivered and being healed and being set free, some would rather have the attention that comes with the affliction than the hope that comes through the healing. Hallelujah. But Jesus said, I want to know, are you sick of being sick? Are you tired of being lame? Are you ready for a change in your life? Are you ready to lead this lifestyle of living by the pool, waiting for that one moment that you can be healed? And he said, sir, I have no one to help me. And while I'm trying to get in, someone steps in ahead of me and they receive their healing. Despair and discouragement were such an inherent part of the people that lived by the pool. He had been there so long. He had failed too many times to get in. He had become so disillusioned by the water and so discouraged by his condition that he failed to recognize that the one that made the water and the one that could heal his body was standing right next to him, inviting him into a miracle moment. He had been such a long time in that case that the longevity of his condition had worn down his hope of ever being healed but Jesus said to him sir take up your bed and walk and then without any angels in attendance without a ripple in the water the Bible said immediately the man took up his bed and began to walk it was his time it was his moment and when time held him captive when his problem had imprisoned him what he could not do in 38 years Jesus did in one powerful life changing moment because it doesn't matter how long you've been sick how long you've been in the battle how long you've been in the struggle how long you've been away from God how long you've been bound by sin your long time situation is no match for the power of an on time God God. God can heal you right now. God can fill you with the Holy Ghost right now. God can give you a miracle right now. Does anybody in the house believe that he can do it right now? I feel the Holy Ghost in this building. Somebody help me praise him right now. I feel a surge of the Holy Ghost right now. I'm just going to go ahead and tell somebody, this is your time. This is your moment. Tonight's going to be the night that God does what you've been asking him to do. You see, time can be a great friend and it can be a cruel enemy. I mean, it's a wonderful thing to have on your side when you're trying to accomplish a goal, but it can have a counter effect when something you're praying for seems to never happen. And you feel like you are stuck between the promise of God and the performance of God. And in those moments of waiting, we must not and cannot allow our faith to waver. We must remind ourselves of this one powerful yet sometimes forgotten truth. That God is eternal. That God is not restricted nor bound by time. He is older than time itself. He is the creator of time. It was under his watch that time started ticking. He didn't watch the first sunrise. He spoke it into being. It was his incarnation that divided time from B.C. to A.D. It will be God that declares that time shall be no more. Therefore, the same element that you and I feel trapped in and feel like is working against us, God holds in the palm of his hand. The time and seasons are in the hands of God. He tells the sun when to come up. He beckons the moon out of hiding. There is even a biblical instance in which a man stood in a valley and said, sun stand still and moon did not rise. And the Bible 
Bible said the sun did not go down for about a whole day. God stopped time to secure a victory for Israel. Amen. So what? Amen. Because he is older than time and because he's in control of it, he can manipulate it, if you will. Amen. If to do whatever he needs to do. What I'm trying to say is what has or has not happened in 38 years has no bearing on what God can do for you right now. He is not the great I once was or he would say I can't do it anymore. He's not the great I will be or he would say check back Sunday morning but he's the great I am. The very the very present right now all powerful almighty God and because he is the I am he is ever present and because he is ever present it is not too late for God to heal your body it is not too late for God to save your family it's not too late for God to give you a miracle supply your need fill you with the Holy Ghost it can happen right now But while he is in full control of time, he will make himself subject to your faith. What do you mean he will not do it if you don't want him to? He can't do it if you don't believe him for it because unbelief is the one thing that restricts the God who has no restriction, who has no limits. But when he comes into an atmosphere like this that is charged by the power of prayer and faith and worship, the miraculous is simply inevitable. Amen. Some time ago, I was praying. Amen. Another one of those prayers. I was praying. I said, God, I am tired of normal church. Anybody ever prayed that prayer? God, I am tired of normal church. And the Holy Ghost stopped me and God said, when I walked on the earth, amen, I healed everywhere I went. He said it was normal for me to heal. It was normal for people to be delivered, to be set free and miracles to happen. He said, what's not normal is for my presence to be there and nothing happened. Hallelujah. So he's, the Lord just said, amen, you want to have normal church. It's normal for me to fill people with the Holy Ghost. It's normal. What's not normal is for that not to happen. So tonight, I just want to have normal church. I want God to be God and do God things in this. My God. It would be quite normal while you're sitting at your pew and the word going forth. It would be quite normal for that disease or sickness to be healed right now. It would be quite normal for you to lift your hands at your seat and begin to speak at other times as the spirit gives the utterance. That's normal church. That's why it did not matter that the woman in Mark chapter 5 had an issue of blood for 12 years. She touched the hem of his garment and immediately was healed. It did not matter that the woman in Luke chapter 18, 13 had an issue, had an infirmity for 18 years, could not stand up straight. The Bible said Jesus touched her and immediately didn't matter that Abraham was 100 and Sarah was 90. Imagine that Facebook status. Amen. Looking for a good nursing home next to a good school. Hallelujah. The promised child was born. It didn't matter that Lazarus had been in the grave for four days. Jesus called him out. There is one word that leaps off the pages of the Bible to me. And when I read it, amen, every time I read it, there is something miraculous that happens. And it, it, it charges my faith again. It's the word immediately. Because the Bible said immediately the leper was cleansed. Immediately Jesus caught him. Immediately they begin to see. Immediately the fever left her. Immediately he walked. Immediately all the doors are open. Can I tell you what I feel in the Holy Ghost? God's getting ready to bring an immediate answer to a long time prayer and a long time situation. 
Oh, God. I'm going to say it again. God's getting ready to bring an immediate answer to a long-time prayer and a long-time need. I don't know who you are, but it's in this house right now. Hayama Kayama. My question is, how are you going to respond when it's your time? Are you going to be like the man at the pool that says, I've been here 38 years, I haven't seen it yet? Or would you say, this is my day. I'm rolling up the bed mat. I'm leaving the pool because today healing is coming to my body. I refuse to go back and live by the pool. Is that how you feel here tonight? I'm going to take it one step further right now. If you knew in the next few moments, if you knew in the next few moments that God was going to answer your prayer, if you knew in the next few moments God was going to heal your body and give you the miracle you've been praying for and fill you with the Holy Ghost and move that mountain, how would you respond to him right now? How would you worship him? What kind of faith would you exhibit? What act of faith would you do if you knew this is my night? My God. How would you? Oh Lord, I feel Holy Ghost here right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How would you praise him if he just healed you? How would you worship if God just answered your prayer? We can't stop right here. I feel something in the Holy Ghost. I'm going to ask somebody in faith right now. I wish you would go ahead and praise him like he just did it for you. Uh, uh, uh. Is that the kind of praise you would give him? Is that the response you would give him if he just filled your family with the Holy Ghost? If he just answered, is that the kind of dance you'd do if God just worked the miracle in your life? Release your faith. Release your praise. You may have to do it in advance, but praise him. This is your time. I feel Holy Ghost flowing right now. Come on, God's going to do it tonight. God's going to do it now. I need two or three people to believe God with me. It's going to happen tonight. God's going to answer our prayer tonight. Sir, you need to take your wife by the hand and just start dancing in advance. It's going to happen. God's going to do exactly what he said he would do. Now is the time. Come on, somebody obey the Holy Ghost, right? I feel the Holy Ghost moving up on somebody right now. God's just waiting on your response. Amen. It's your hands, your step that's going to untie the hands of God. God. Some of you are just moments away from the promise of God being fulfilled in your life. Oh, there's something happening in the Holy Ghost right now. 
How many of you in this house really believe that the Lord healed the man at the pool? I think that's everybody. How many of you really believe the Lord's coming again? Well, if you've got faith for something he did 2,000 years ago and faith for something he's going to do in the future, why not pull the faith from your past and the faith from your future into this Friday night service? That same faith will bring a miracle of healing in your body right now. That same faith will cause the Holy Ghost to fall on you right now. That same faith will heal your baby. It'll heal your home. It'll move your mountain now. Lift your faith. Lift your voice and praise him. He amad a Sunday yabaha yabakori yamahai. He amad a Sunday now, now, now is the time. You come too late to tell me he can't do it in a moment. But you don't know how long I've had it. You don't know how long. I've, don't let your calendar dictate God's capability. Hallelujah. God's saying, I'm the God of right now. I am ready. All I need is for your faith to come in agreement with my ability. Some time ago I was preaching revival in, in, in Indiana and there was a lady that came. She met me in the parking lot after service. A lady, she was 69 years old. She met me. She said, I don't attend this church. I'm from another church. But she said, I want the Holy Ghost. I've been praying for the Holy Ghost for 20 years. She said, but every time I lift my hands, she said, I hear the words that a man spoke to me 20 years ago. And said, ma'am, at your age, it would take a miracle for you to receive the Holy Ghost. I said, ma'am, first of all, it is God's will for you to receive it. Secondly, you are going to receive it because it is a promise from God. Amen. I said, you come back tomorrow night and God's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. She came back, first one in the altar. Amen. I walked over to her. I said, ma'am, you've already repented of your sins. Yes, sir. You've already been baptized. She said, yes. I said, all you got to do is lift your hands right now and begin to worship God. The Holy Ghost is already on you. And she looked at me with that smile on her face, lifted her hands in just moments. She began to speak in a heavenly language as a spirit gave the utterance. It doesn't matter how long it's been. I felt something in prayer today in my room. Hey Amen. I feel a miracle in this house right now. Hallelujah. I've got plenty of stories I could tell you. But I feel the Holy Ghost wanting to do a work in this building right now. I wish you one more time. Lift your voice, your hands, and your faith to heaven. And let's pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. God's getting ready to do it. You're saying, how long would it take for God to answer my prayer? The Lord said it shall come to pass that before you call me, I will answer. And while you are yet speaking, I will hear you. God is saying before you get it out of your mouth, it's done. Amen. When you're driving down the interstate, you don't have time. When the car comes in the opposite direction in the wrong lane, you don't have time to pull over on the side of the highway. Put a worship CD in. Call a couple of people and say, hey, this could get bad. We need to pray right now. All you have time to do is shout, Jesus! 
And before you get the last letter of his name out of your mouth, the angels of God have stepped in and protected you and protected your family. Amen. I feel so strongly in my spirit that those of you that have a need and you've been praying about it for a while, amen, I don't want you to wait till you get this altar, but somebody needs to lift their hands. And as you make your way out of your seat, you need to start saying that name. You need to start saying the name of Jesus. And while you're, my God, while you are saying that name, before you can get to this altar, the name of the Lord, there's going to be healing virtue that flows in your body. While you are saying that name, the Holy Ghost is going to fall upon you. While you are speaking that name, while you are speaking that name, the mountain is going to be moved. While you are speaking that name, the heaviness is going to be lifted. God's going to lift you up. My God, while you are speaking that name, the chain is going to be broken. The prayer is going to be answered. Now, now, anybody else got a need a situation amen a prayer you want the Holy Ghost now come on that's it just move in close God is moving right now now, now is the time. Now is the time. I want you to lift your voice and begin to tell God what you need him to do right now. The ministry of this church. We're going to move to this altar. We're going to pray and God's going to respond. Do not be surprised when it happens. You should be surprised if it doesn't happen. You ought to be surprised if it doesn't happen because there is healing in this place right now. There is divine intervention. Tonight is your night to receive the Spirit of God. Tonight is your night for God to give you peace, for God to give you direction. You've been praying about it for a long time. God, I need it. I want it. God is saying now is the time. That's it, release your faith, your expectation.
a miraculous, Brother Klaus. It gets easy for me to say, my God, how great, how great you are. What about when you're in the storm? I prayed with several of you that I know you're walking through a storm. Or you're, you're in the middle of a storm, kind of like the disciples. Trying to do the will of God. Find yourself in the middle of darkness, storm. You need to remember God's in that boat too. You're still a child of God. You're still the temple of the Most High. God's in that midst of that storm with you. Let's pray with somebody tonight. And I was reminded. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. We don't know how long it was between that verse and the next one. Some scholars say that may be where the people get millions of years. I don't know. Ain't a heaven or hell issue. Regardless of how long it was, how chaotic it was, how dark it was, when God had enough, and He said, let there be light. I've always said this is one of the greatest miracles. If you can believe that about the Bible, you can believe anything. Let there be light. And before there was a sun, a star, a source to give it, the atmosphere said, he said it, shine. But we can't. There's no, el- it don't matter, shine. There's no way. It doesn't matter. The master said, shine, let the light be. And the Bible says, no arguments, no struggle. Let there be light. And there was light. We think we got to get everything just perfect in our life before God can begin working. If you believe that, it's never going to happen. There was still chaos on the earth. There was still no stability. Everything was water. But God said, it's time for revelation. The man of God just spoke revelation into the house today. I don't care how long it's been dark. When God said, enough's enough. 38 years, 18 years, 12 years. When God says, enough's enough. Job said, God, ancient of days, time's nothing in your hands. Jeffrey's paraphrase, I'm getting ready to die from all this affliction. And I know you're out there somewhere. I can't see you before me, behind me, on the right hand or the left. I, I can't find you. But I have this confidence. You know the path I trod. And when you're done, in the fullness of time, when everything is comes together for the good. My wife likes to bake, Sister Lopez. And I'm one of them husbands that comes through and sticks my finger in the batter. Cookies are better before they're baked. I get chased out of the kitchen now by the girls, too. But every once in a while, I I make a mistake and I taste that thing before she gets the good stuff in there. Oh, that's nasty. Job said, God, I've tasted the bitter cup to the full. He 
said, but as long as breath is in my body, my lips will not. They won't speak disparagingly about you. If I've been here for the bad stuff, you can bet I'm going to wait around. And when he's finished, I'll come forth tried as pure gold. Look, you're going through the tough stuff. Don't take a taste in, of what you're going through right now and say, well, it's not worth it. Let him fill in all the ingredients. Let Shelly get finished with the vanilla and the sugar and the chocolate chips and some more sugar some flour and then some brown sugar and then taste and see that the Lord is good oh folks it's getting good I said it's getting good you, 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 uh, trust me from this perspective I, kn I know some of you are still going through some deep hard stuff about to wrap this thing up it's getting good Trust me. If you ever come down 74, if you've never been to Peoria, you come down 74, and from Indianapolis, it is the most boring drive, Brother Ray. It's like, my God, is there anything in Illinois except corn and beans? Then you come around that you come around that last bend in East Peoria, and especially at night. It's just like, wow. Come on. We're coming around the corner. It may have been a long road to get here. Don't get off at Morton. It's a great city. It's a good place to gas up. But hang on. Come on, don't get off yet. We're about to see the good stuff. And I'm excited about it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Brother Winters. Oh, man. Folks, I, I think he can preach. We, we, owe, we owe Papa uh, Randall, we owe him one on this one. Brother Beardsley, no, he, he's going to take a beating on that one. But no, we love Brother Beardsley too, but... Uh, Tomorrow night, we're going to come back, 7 o'clock. Bring your friends tomorrow night. Tonight was good for us. But if you know somebody, if you know somebody that's struggling, maybe you know somebody that used to be a saint and now they're an ain't. You've been praying for them. God's laid them on your heart. I mean, if you got one of those going, i got about three of them right now. Your son's one of them. Not you, sister. Uh, you're, we got yours straightened up and heading in the right direction. They're helping other people. Praise God. But, Sister Peggy, I'm believing God for Justin. He's a good man. He just needs God. Can you sit in the same auditorium with your brother? Okay, good. Good. Pray about it. If God lays you lays them on your heart and you have opportunity, what does it hurt? What are they gonna do? Say no. Was that for effects or what? Or is it just time to shut up, Pastor? Let's see it happen. Brother Shannon. I told him the other day, where, where there he is. I said, it's good to have some of the old crew back. I, I, was, they, I was their youth pastor. It's awesome to have some of the old crew. I, I want to see more of them. How about you? Amen. Let's pray them back in, Brother Shannon. Let's see what God will do. Katrina, yeah, I'm proud of you, girl. I, aren't you proud of these people, man? You're doing awesome.
God's doing miracles in their lives. Ah, fantastic. And brother Winters, the guy was right. It'd take a miracle at her age to get the Holy Ghost because it's a miracle at any age. In fact, it's the greatest miracle. Amen. So go, let God use you. Let's have church tomorrow night. Amen. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.